All right, now we're into preparing our file. And what that basically means is if you have a complex object like this, you're probably, as you're printing out, you're going to need supports to kind of hang onto this object as it prints out. And what does all that mean? Well, if we skip ahead really quickly to export and we go in here to simulator and we click and drag, you're going to see this is actually how it's going to print. So you're going to have a big vat of resin down here in an LCD screen and all the parts that are white on that LCD screen are going to cure that layer of resin and all the stuff that's black isn't going to do anything. So as this goes up, boop, 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 little by little, it's going to go up a little bit. If I go down to the bottom, it's going to be white on the screen. And it's going to sit there for a couple seconds and then it's going to lift up shoop, and it's going to come back down and then print the next layer. Lift up and, it's, and you're going to hear it too. As it lifts up, you're going to hear a little whoosh, and that's basically this hardened resin on your FEP or that plastic sheet at the bottom. It's hardening and then it's, the, it's going to lift up so it unsticks from the FEP and you can control that distance in the resin settings. And then you can, it'll push it back down to one layer above where it was uh, originally, harden that resin there, lift it up and just keep doing that. Now the problem is as it lifts up, it's all fine and good as long as it starts from a point here, but you're going to see, for example, we got this big thing here and let's say, you know what? Okay, it printed out these little islands first, and then it keeps printing and it keeps printing. And I'm going to get to a really obvious one. So here, you're going to see we're printing out these sections here. And then now we've got this little piece right here. So this build plate is what's connecting to this object. And right now, all that's holding this entire heavy, big plastic head is these original... I'll show you how silly it is. These original points way back here, that's all that's supporting this. As, as it's going out, choo -choo -choo, print, 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 print. As it's printing this out, this is the, those are the only points that are supporting this. Obviously, this is going to get heavy. And as it's peeling off that build, uh, that FEP plastic, it's going to be pulling. And so it's, as it's doing that, you need supports out here to support all of this mass hanging straight down. And again, as we add supports, this will be more obvious, but you need supports in here to help pull all this plastic as it's sticking to this every couple seconds or every time it goes down to the next layer. Uh, you need supports in here, especially when you get to things like this. You're going to see a little, see this little island that popped up. So now there's no supports in here. So as it goes down and creates this island and then it pulls back up and comes back down, these things could just float off. You know, you've got all these little islands with no supports like i said they could just float off so there's a couple things you need to think about as you're arranging and adding supports to your object so let's go back to our prepare here and this over here this little thing that i'm pulling down this is just basically giving you a slice preview of what your object is going to look like and in fact with this selected you can go up and down so if i want to just look at the top or i just want to look at the bottom we can do that so if you want to flip our camera just move this around we can do that in here with these two arrows and you're also going to see in here a little plus sign or this little white dot over here. This will give you all of the settings in here that you also have over here. If you click on here and you go in here, these are all the lift settings. So when we were talking about, let's get escape. So we were talking about like, okay, here's your thing. And it's lifting up off this resin vat that's down here, your FEP film, and it's lifting. That's what those lift speeds and the, the duration that it's staying down on your FEP film and exposing the white areas, uh, all of that can be dialed in. Now, another thing to be aware of is when we're talking about it sticking to the plate here, you're going to see there's big, broad white areas. Well, if you're hardening or curing big, broad areas of resin, that's going to be really sticky. So there's two things you need to do. You need to either make it so it's not so broad of an area. And you can do that by going back in here into layout, selecting your object, go in here to like rotate, and you can kind of rotate your object. Go back in here to prepare and then here you can see now that we've rotated this you know maybe some of these areas aren't so broad and i go ahead and do that uh, another thing that you can do is you can hollow out an object so before we get into supporting i'm going to skip supports rafts so we're going to go straight here to hollow so with our head selected i'm going to go in here and let's talk about hollowing it's going to start you out on holes which um We'll get to that in a second. Uh, so we have hollowing 3D, 2D, and blockers. So for hollowing 3D, just click on that. And with this object selected, we're gonna go ahead and hollow this object out at a thickness of 2.5 millimeters. And you may be thinking, well, that doesn't seem very thick at all, but you gotta remember the scale we're working at. 
when we were measuring uh, the nose and ZBrush in our earlier video, I think this is only 11 millimeters wide. So 2.5, if we go ahead and say, okay, a hollowing 3D, 2.5 thickness. And of course you can just tap in here to change it or click and drag this, but 2.5 should be fine. Uh, the quality here, I'm just gonna crank this up to four because it doesn't take that long. So I want the highest quality they have available. And then you need to hit add. So we're gonna add a hollowing 3D to this object. So now that we've done that, we can now click through our slice preview and you're gonna see, okay, awesome. Now the entire object is hollowed out. Now instead of these big, huge areas of cured resin, now it's just got these little areas. So now as it's going through and it's printing out our file, and this is all upside down by the way. So this is the lowest area. This is what's going to initially be printed. And then from here, everything is gonna kind of hang down. If you wanna see that in real time or real life, go to flip camera and now you can see this is the direction everything is gonna be kind of dipped. This is your build plate, this blue line right here. So as you're going down, it's printing, it's printing, it's printing. So this is what's gonna be kind of printing as it goes print, 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 print. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and flip camera. And yeah, of course you can also go to export and look at the simulator to get a better uh, sense of that. So that's great. We've hollowed this object out. We have less broad white areas. You can go back in the layout and rotate things around if you'd like. And that's really all you need to do for hollowing 3D. Now, one thing you can do while you're, you know, hollowing stuff in 3D is sometimes like if you have a, a chest cavity with an arm you wanna hollow out, you can add a blocker so that it doesn't hollow out the arm. Uh, if it's just not worth it or you don't want to hollow it out. So you can hollow the 3D object, then you can go in here and you can say blockers. We can go to, I'm going to select the object first. We're going to say add. Uh, you can choose a cylinder, a cube, or a sphere. I'm going to go ahead and take a cylinder here. I was going to click right here. Let's go ahead and scale it out. And you see as I'm adding this blocker, it's adding a volume that's telling it that printer, remember whatever, everything's white. We want it to cure. So that's going to block this hole, effectively creating a big old area for it to continue to cure in this area. So again, if you wanted to effectively remove a hole from an, uh, a part of an object, you can use a blocker for that. So we'll go ahead and hit update and exit. And now as we go through and we scrub through here, we have a, a blocker telling it not to print in uh, the whole area, but to go ahead and print in here, of course. I don't really need that for this model, so I'm gonna go in here to edit, and then we're gonna select this blocker and then just hit delete out of our scene, exit, it'll go ahead and update for us, and now that blocker is gone. Now for hollowing 2D, I'm just gonna go back to hollowing 3D, I'm just gonna delete this one, just click that little trash can, you can see that hollowing is gone now. Uh, hollowing 2D, if we click on that, we're gonna get a preview of our hollowing, and I'm also gonna direct your attention back to the objects section right here. So you're gonna see this little icon right here is to enable and disable a hollowing in 2D. By default, I think they're both enabled. So when I go in here and click this on, you're gonna see we have, it's basically doing a, basically it's a 2D hollow. It's not hollowing your 3D object, essentially it's looking at this slice and then it's saying, okay, this is my area of the cured resin. I'm gonna come in 2.5 millimeters on the sliced image. I'm gonna fill this with black. And then also on the sliced image, I'm going to add some infill. And if I scroll through here, you're gonna see they kind of crisscross over each other. So it's basically creating a lattice infill as it's printing out. So just think of these as like tiny little bracers or rods crisscrossing over each other, infilling your object, giving it strength on these interior areas. And in fact, if you want it to be really strong or dense or heavier, you can go in here to the infill density and go from 20% up to like 40%. So it's even more dense. And if we drop this back down, you can also go down here to double lattice. And that'll go ahead and give you double lattices all the way through. So as it's printing out, it's going to print an interior lattice in your object. And you're also going to see dimming. So if we turn this off and we turn dimming on, you can control the dimming intensity. So it's set at 50% by default. You can drop this down to 30 or crank it up to 80%, you're gonna see the higher it is, uh, the dimmer that effect is. So now if you just want to print something out, this is fully cured resin right here, and then this is going to be not quite as cured, you know, because when the LED shines on it, this pure white areas are really gonna harden that resin. This area right here isn't gonna harden it as much. This is for when you wanna print out like a translucent or a transparent resin, and it needs to be kind of full, but 
if you were to print this out with dimming off, you, your model might crack. So this is a way to kind of avoid that is just to turn dimming on. And then you can print it out full of resin. Uh, it'll just make this a little less cured in the middle. So you have total control over that as well. In our case, we don't. I'm not really going to use hollowing 2D, but of course, feel free to use it if that makes sense for what you want to print. I'm going to go back here to hollowing 3D. We're going to go ahead and just, again, add a hollow 3D to our selected skull here. And now let's talk about holes, because now that we've hollowed this out, uh, we need some holes so we can get our alcohol bath or our cleaning bath uh, in through those hollow areas. And you also don't want your hollow areas just full of sloshy resin, right? So if we go back down to the very bottom here, here's our entire head. And then we can click on holes and you can add as many holes as you want to. So in uh, different types. So here's cylinder and here's cube. So we have our cylinder selected. I can go through here and say, okay, you know what? I want a hole. I've kind of got a, a nice area for a hole right here already. So I'm just go ahead and click in here and then add it a hole. And then I can add another one, maybe right here. Now, if you have pro, what you can do is you can hit this. You can see right down here, it says, hey, click the space bar or you can click on this advanced button, either one. Space bar toggles between classic, which is essentially just putting holes on your object and you can, you can put as many on there as you want. Or you can hit space bar and you can literally go through here and you can change the scale, which you'll see this will update. So if I'm out of space bar and I just put a hole on here, I can go through here, I can change the diameter. I can change the penetration more or less, or I can hit space bar to go into advanced mode. And if I go to the top here and I start clipping through, I want to make sure that this thing goes all the way through the object. So with, it, with pro, you can go through here in advanced mode and you can change. You can see when I do this scale, it's going to update the penetration distance. So there's 8.9. Uh, here's less. Here's more. You can move this thing around and you can scale the diameter visually in your viewport as opposed to going over here and changing these settings. So that's super useful. And uh, looking through my model, it looks like this cylinder got pushed in a little bit far. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one and hit space bar. And I'm going to move this back out and make sure it goes all the way through the object again. So you can just scale this out. Or if you don't have pro or you're in classic, just change that uh, diameter here. You're also going to see object as a whole. So you can use any object and that could be from your library. So if I go into the library here and just choose a cube. And that pushed us back onto the layout mode, by the way. So don't get too confused. And we're going to go in here to scale. And I'm just going to scale and rotate this thing and transpose it back so we can just poke a hole right into the head. Oh, I should also tell you, you know, obviously, if you're outside the bounding box, it's going to, it'll let you know that it's uh, hashed over here. So we want to poke a hole through this entire object. We can do that. We can go in here to prepare. And then with that object selected, we can say, okay, this object I have selected, go ahead and make it a hole, hit OK. And now this object, as it's clipping through, will be treated as a hole. So you're going to see as it's printing, it's going to effectively make that area black. So as it's printing out, that'll effectively create a hole all the way through your object. Of course, we don't really need that. So I'm going to take this cube and go back in here to layout, select the cube, delete it out of our scene, go back into prepare. So now we have or object oriented. We've talked about slicing. We've added hollowing and we've added holes to our mesh. Oh, and you also probably want to put two holes in there. If you just put one, you know, you can get cleaner in there, but it's going to have a heart. It's going to go glug, 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 trying to come back out. So having two holes in there will allow air through one and then the wash through the other. So that'll allow it a little bit more. And of course, you're not, you don't have to do just two. You can do as many as you want, but that's what I've got for this model. And you may notice that, uh, let's go back to layout so I can nudge this over just a bit. You may notice I didn't touch the jaw or hollow it out. These are already pretty thin. I don't need to hollow this jaw out any. So I think that'll be just fine. Now, before we leave the hollowing area, there is one really cool thing I'd like to show you. And it's another way you can kind of visualize things. So what we're gonna do is we've got, we'll just do this on our skull. So we've got our skull selected here and it's got holes and it's hollow. So just to kind of prove that, if I go in here to prepare and kind of skip down through the models, okay, we got holes in there and it's all hollowed out. However, if we go in here to uh, just skip ahead to export real quickly, uh, we're in the simulator mode. We're going to go up here to object mode and you're going to see, okay, we can export this as a slice file, which we'll talk about in the next video when we talk about exporting, but I'm going to skip here to the export 3D. So you can export your model as it is into another, into a 3D file that you can evaluate or change in another program. So what I'm going to do is say export 3D. We'll go ahead and make it an STL file. And we can also say export holes as a 3D file. And why that's important is it'll tell you right here, 2D, hol 2D hollowing is just basically taking your slice image file 
and making changes to that. There's nothing 3D really to export. So they obviously won't export as a model. However, 3D hollowing can be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say export 3D file. Go ahead and call it lychee skull. And I'm gonna go in here and say export holes as 3D file. Lychee skull holes. And then if we hop back into ZBrush where we started originally, I'm gonna add a edit mode, hit control N. Go in here and say import. We're gonna grab our skull, okay? And then we're gonna go back to our Polymesh 3D and we'll go and import and we'll say skull holes. Say okay. So now we have our lychee skull file here and I can go in here to append. Here's our skull holes and that's literally just putting those cylinders in here. And oh, one thing I should mention, back in here when we were adding those holes, If you go into your library and say you wanted to make your own cylinder and use it as a whole, you can go in here and you can change the radial segment. So if you didn't want it so segmented, you could just type in 40. And there you go, you get a cleaner cylinder to cut from. Of course, you can also import your own cylinders, but just wanted to call that out uh, as a possibility. So we'll go ahead and delete that out of here and we'll go back into prepare. So back into ZBrush. In ZBrush, if we want to view these holes as they actually should be as a 3D model, we're going to go in here, we're going to click the second icon, which is Boolean Subtractive, and then we're going to go in here and turn on our Live Boolean button. And you can see this is going to show those 3D files as the skull and then the holes, and those holes are going to cut through. Another cool thing, too, is if we go in here and append, say, a Cube 3D, and that Cube 3D happens to be big enough, if we turn on transparent to surround the entire object. If it's not, simply hit W and then Y if you're not in gizmo mode. Um, and then now we're in gizmo mode, we can scale this up and then we can move this up above our objects. We're gonna go ahead and set this one to subtractive as well. So now if I go back to our scene file and we'll go ahead and turn off transparent here. Now, because we set this to subtractive, it's gonna disappear. However, as I push this down, you're gonna see it's gonna start slicing effectively through my object. And you're gonna see it's gonna go through here and it's going to go around the holes. So you can kind of get a preview of what your object's gonna look like as it's slicing through, just using Booleans and also Booleaning out your holes. Now, one thing I can do is I'm gonna take this skull, I'm gonna say Control Shift, drag over a little piece of that skull, do Control Shift A, and then do a split hidden, that's gonna be under Subtool Split Hidden. And then I'm actually gonna take this, take these holes, move them up one, and I'm gonna take this skull, and I'm gonna say Merge Down, so the skull and the holes are all together. Because what I'm gonna, what I want to do is, while I'm slicing through, I can select the skull and I can rotate this around, and you can kind of see how these are going to update. But anyway, uh, back in Lightyear, I just wanted to show that you could export these models and continue to manipulate or at least preview uh, in other programs too, if you'd like.